Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His blessings. I wanted to share with you my story of of religion, um, just my reversion story back to Islam. So I was uh, I was born into a Muslim family in India, and one of the things about growing up as a as a Muslim kid in India is uh, is that we are taught uh, from a very early age religiously how to read the Arabic alphabet. So that pretty much, I mean, I can say this is a, a, a general practice uh, in India and probably other, other countries as well, uh, other, Muslim, uh, other Muslim countries. Uh, Muslim families, they will, uh, they will hire a teacher and they will, they will have their kids taught how to read uh, the Arabic alphabet, how to read the Quran, how to recite the Quran. And in most households, they themselves will teach the kids how to pray, and all of the uh, uh, all of the rituals of of worship, the form of worship, and and how to pray, which direction to face, and all of those things. So, so just like any other Muslim family, uh, a Muslim family in India, uh, we were taught how to read the Arabic alphabet. Okay, very good, and we were taught how to pronounce the letters, uh, how to pronounce the words. And then uh, off we go to the races, and so we start, we start reciting the Quran, we start uh, we start memorizing parts of the Quran. Especially, it is uh, it is very common for for little kids to begin with the very end of the Quran, because that has uh, very small chapters which are which are very very easy to learn. So just like any other family, uh, I I also was memorizing those things as a kid. And I remember reciting to to my grandfather, uh, and he also encouraged that very much. And so I remember those things. However, one thing I also remember very distinctly is I had no idea what I was saying. And this is an issue for a majority of the Muslim world. 80%, 80% of the Muslim world, 1.6 billion Muslims, approximately 80%, do not speak Arabic. Once again, 80% of Muslims do not speak Arabic. However, the entire Quran, all of our prayers, our daily five prayers, all of it is in Arabic. Okay? So, this, this is an issue, and, and this is an issue which needs to be addressed. Um, so, so, learning is, is great, but with no meaning, the foundations are very, very weak. So, so we, learned, we learned all of those things. We learned how to pray. And one of the things I remember about, about being a, a kid is, is that we would celebrate uh, the, two, the two festivals, uh, the two Eid. Um, and we would also fast. I remember fasting. I also remember not fasting, which is not so good. Um, and... But, but on the days of Eid, I do remember that we would, uh, there would be wonderful cooking. We would go to the mosque very, very early. We would travel. Uh, we would go to the mosque. We would pray uh, very early in the morning. We would come back. We would dress ourselves in the finest clothing. And we would then go to our neighbors and we would give them food and sweets. And in turn, they also would give us uh, what they had cooked on the occasion of Eid. So it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a festive atmosphere. The way that people in this country, they feel at Christmas time, right? There is a, there is a, a feeling of goodwill. You know, people want to be nice to other people. Uh, people want to be good. They, they want to treat their neighbors, their friends in an extra special way. So all of those same feelings uh, I can I can testify to also on our occasions of of Eid, uh, of the two festivals when we used to celebrate. One thing I also remember is that I have I I had ever been curious about religion. I have always wanted to know more. I have always wanted to investigate. Uh, in junior high, I remember trying to read up on Buddhism, read up on meditation. How does it work? What are its benefits? You know, we've seen, you know, we've seen these monks and these priests uh, meditating uh, 
uh, Tibetan monks and so on. I mean, just on TV. So just out of curiosity, you know, what is meditation? How does it work? I remember meeting a friend in, in Canada, in Lakefield, who told me about Taoism. And so I started reading about Taoism. What is Taoism? How does it work? What, you know, what are the concepts there? And um, it was in, you know, uh, I lived for the first 10 years of my life in India. And then uh, our family had the opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia. And I was there for the next five years. And in, while I was in Saudi Arabia, my dad had already been there for many, many years. However, even though he was there for many years, he did not speak Arabic. You know, it's, it's possible to survive in Saudi Arabia without learning the Arabic language. Okay. And so I went there for five years. I did the same thing. I did not learn Arabic. Uh, and uh, so, so, so living in Saudi Arabia was, was very interesting. The first, uh, the first feeling of being in Saudi was, oh my God, everything is so clean coming from India. Because in India, if you, if you take a stroll, you will see tons of, tons of people. You will see tons of garbage all over the place and tons of, tons of dirt. Okay. And, and also, you know, tons of very nice, very good people. Okay. Don't get me wrong. But, but seriously, I mean, as a kid, as a, as a 10 year old, my first feeling of coming to Saudi Arabia and, and walking inside our apartment was, man, it is, it is beautiful. It is clean. It is clean. I can't find dirt anywhere. Um, and, and being in Saudi Arabia, it was, it was a, it was a good experience. Um, and I mean, really all of the facilities that we see here in the U S, uh, uh, especially if you're if you're working for a company like Aramco, uh, Saudi Aramco, which is the oil company there, uh, they have I mean the the pool tables, the ping pong tables, the swimming pools, the tennis courts. So it's it's like a little America inside inside the Aramco campus uh, camps there. Uh, so 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 all of these facilities were new to us coming coming from India, and also clean water. Clean water was something which was which we really appreciated. I mean, in in India, we're used to uh, we're used to uh, getting the water from the wells and then uh, putting the water on the stove, boiling it up, and then cooling it down, and then drinking the water. So in Saudi Arabia, there were there were special places where we could go and we could fill up uh, the fresh water and bring these huge uh, these huge cans back home. And you don't have to do anything with this water; you just drink it. So this was this was amazing. Uh, so these these were my these were my experiences uh, just just growing up as a, as a kid there. And so in terms of religion, what happened next? What happened next is that I went to Canada. I went to Canada for two years. I went to Canada for high school, and the school I went to, Lakefield College School in Ontario, uh, very close to Peterborough. Uh, it's about an hour, hour and a half northeast of Toronto. And one thing I did not know, one thing my family did not know before I went there, is that it's a Christian affiliated school. You know, I, I did not know that. So the first day of school, I am walking into the chapel area and I look around and I'm thinking, I, I'm not supposed to be here. And so I tell one of the advisors, I'm like, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not supposed to be here. And they're like, it's required. You have to be here every single day. So I attended chapel in Canada for two years, every single day. And this was my first experience of, of Christianity and my first experience of, of people in church singing hymns, any major announcements which are made. You know, these are all happening in the chapel. Okay, so how is this not supposed to impact you? Uh, so this is one of the things which, which, uh, which really scares people uh, uh, in, in sending their kids abroad is, uh, and I remember my mom and dad also, you know, uh, being fearful that I might convert to Christianity. Okay, this is a, uh, this is a common, uh, this is a common fear. Uh, because it has it has happened. There are many instances where where you know they have sent their families, they have sent their kids over for education, and they come back with a different religion. Okay, so so I attended chapel for two years every single day, uh, not every on the weekdays. Okay, um, 
and and this was this was a very very interesting experience to me, uh, especially the singing, okay, especially the singing, the singing of hymns, the singing of hymns, also the singing of hymns in English, in a language which I could understand, okay. So this was very very important. Not only that, but also in literature in English class with Paul Mason, uh, he. Um, in English class, we would also learn about some of the teachings of, of Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, so this was my first experience to concepts such as the golden rule, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and also the Sermon on the Mount, um, uh, you know, the blessed are the poor, blessed are the, um, are the meek, uh, you know, that, that speech, and also uh, about the stoning of the woman where you know people were were ready to stone her and he uh, jesus peace be upon him uh said uh, you know let him who is without sin be the first to cast the stone and then everybody kind of quieted down and nobody did that uh um and also do not take the name of your uh of your lord uh god in vain all of these things were very very new to me and my first experience uh, with, these, with these Christian concepts, uh, with Christian theology, was in English class with Paul Mason. And this had a very, very uh, lasting impact on me. Because for somebody who is coming from knowing how to pray, learning the scripture, learning the Quran, memorizing, but not having I won't, I won't say any meaning, not having much in terms of meaning and understanding. These concepts of treating other people with kindness, of treating your neighbors the way you would have, uh, the way you want to be treated yourself, uh, these concepts, these moral lessons were very, very important to me and they had a huge impact on my life. And so, <clears throat> so I was taken aback. I, I, was, I was in love with the with the character of Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, because because I I recognized that these are things which are not you know which uh, you know the average Joe on the street is not going to say, you know love your neighbor as yourself and and so on you know this was something special, this was something special, uh, so so I was I was very very impressed I was very very um, um, I was very very affected by it, and <clears throat> as time went on. There was one time that I, I prayed my Islamic prayer uh, in front of my, uh, my roommate and he said to me, you think that you are going to pray in this way, stand up and go down and you think you're going to enter heaven. And I looked at him and I thought, you know, you're, you're right because I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm praying. I don't know what I'm saying when I'm praying. So you're absolutely right. And that really um, knocked me off my track. And for me as a kid, you know, at, at 15 or 16, uh, I derailed, uh, from Islam. And, you know, at that point I, I, I was in no man's land for the next 15 years or so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at that point, um, I did have one piece of information from Islam and that is that God is one. And also I had one piece of information that God had no son. According to Islam, God had no son, uh, no daughter, uh, no mother, no father, no wife, uh, no companion. No son in particular uh, from Surah Al-Ikhlas, that much I did remember, okay? So, so this is the only information I remember. Also, I should give credit where it is due. Uh, as a kid, I do remember my teacher, my uh, uh, Qur'an teacher, telling us uh, about the story of Moses, peace be upon him, uh, about the parting of the sea, about the drowning of Pharaoh. Uh, so all of those, that story I do remember from Islam, okay? And also the story of Joseph. I remember the story of Joseph, peace be upon him, uh, from my grandfather and also from my uh, Qur'an teacher as a kid. So those stories I remember. However, about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself, I cannot recollect. Okay, I do, <laughs> I do remember one story, 
where you know where my mom told me that you know somebody uh you know made the prophet you know stand up in front of the crowd and you know he was asking people did i wrong anybody and so somebody stood up and said uh, you know i remember that you whipped me and so he made the prophet take off his clothes his his top and he hugged him from behind and he became one of the people who entered who entered heaven okay that story i remember uh, from my mom okay so that much uh, i will i will give um but really beyond uh, beyond just some side stories like that i do not remember any details about the life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him i do not remember any any details of his moral character the way that that i learned about the moral character of jesus peace be upon him i do not remember anything about what he had done about the significance of any of his life or any of his any of the events so literally about prophet muhammad peace be upon him i had almost zero information okay i do know la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there is no god except for allah prophet muhammad peace be upon him is the, is the messenger of god uh, is the messenger of allah yes every muslim knows this beyond that what what information do we know about prophet muhammad peace be upon him i had nothing uh, by the time I, I left to go to Canada to study abroad as a teenager, I knew nothing about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, okay? So, really for the next 15 years, I am in the United States, I am studying, okay? I'm in high school, I'm in college, I'm studying, and I, I am mostly trying to read the Bible at this point, okay? Because I want to know more of of where these concepts came from of love your neighbor of be kind to everybody of so so these things which which were very very powerful to me i want to know more about them so i am reading the bible for the next 15 years all right so uh so during this course what happens is in college uh my good friend mr watkins he tells me that i have a voice which I did not know. So I start, uh, so they gift me some voice lessons and I start uh, learning to sing. Uh, and, uh, and then I join the college choir and after I graduate from college, I join many, many other choirs. So, uh, so at this point, I'm attending church service and I am singing in the choir of the church, okay? And I'm singing, I'm joining, uh, you know, groups in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, you know, Sangre de Cristo Corral and the, the Santa Fe Symphony Chorus. And I'm singing with them and we are singing the Verdi Requiem and we are singing uh, Messiah. We are singing Handel's Messiah. We are singing all of these things. So I am deeply immersed in Christianity and what is the Christian form of worship? It is pretty much the singing of hymns. I mean, this is worship for Christianity, okay? So I am immersed in Christianity for the next 15 years. And every, anywhere I go, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm learning to play the piano, I'm learning to sing, okay? So I am, and, and I go on to, to get a degree in vocal performance and music at, uh, at uh, the University of Colorado at Boulder. And so even even here, I'm I'm really, uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just involved in, in music a lot. So this becomes my passion for for the next many many years: classical music, opera, musical comedy, uh, vocal performance. All of this becomes a, a major focus in my life and a major part of my life, uh, thanks to Mr. Watkins, and and his encouragement really. Okay. So then at, the, at this point, I am, when I'm in Colorado, I am going to school for music and I am working at the same time. My work visa comes to an end. Uh, this is about at the age of 30. And I do not have the opportunity to get a green card and renew. And so I go back to India for a year, year and a half. And at this point, the the quran has always been with me okay my my parents they truly sincerely
they gave me the Qur'an with the English translation. It's not that it was not available to me. For these 15 years, the copy of the Qur'an that they gave me with the Arabic and the English translation has been with me. And I have had the intention of reading it for 15 years and I did not do it. Okay, uh, because I wanted to read the Bible first and then come to the Qur'an. Okay, and so I go back to India and at this point, there are two reasons. There are two reasons for me to go back. One is, well, I mean, the obvious reason is my visa has ended and I have to go back. I have no choice. All right. So apart from that, there are two other reasons why I go back to India. One is I need to know for somebody who has never lived in India as an adult, I need to know what my country looks like uh, to an adult and to know if there is the possibility of me coming back to India and actually living there, uh, getting accustomed to that climate, to the culture again. And is it possible for me, uh, do I see myself back in India and, and living uh, and living there? And two, I really want to resolve the issue of religion for myself. Because uh, I have always wanted to read the Quran, I have, I have always wanted to read the Bible, even at this point, I have not really read much of the Bible. Uh, I'm probably still stuck in Genesis. I, I start and I stop. The same, the same thing that many, many people go through, okay? So when I come back to India, I have two purposes. One is, what does my country look like? What do, what do my people look like? How do they behave? How do they interact? You know, what, uh, what, you know, what do our streets look like? How, how are the people? How, are the, how is the place? Uh, and two, my own religion, Islam. Before I leave it officially, because at this point, at this point, for, uh, you know, from 15 to 30, uh, I, I had to come up with an identity for myself. So for the first 15 years of my life, my identity was, I am Muslim. For the next 15 years of my life, my identity was, I come from a Muslim background, okay? This was my identity. I come from a Muslim background, but I am, I am, I'm converting to Christianity, but I cannot convert yet because I, I, I have never understood the Trinity and the Trinity is problematic to me. So I cannot fully convert to Christianity, okay? But, uh, and I know from Islam that God does not have a son, but Christianity says that God has a son. So I am in no man's land. So the second reason, I must resolve this issue of religion. Uh, at the end of 30 years, I feel like I have a degree in electrical engineering, I had a job, I have a degree in music, but still there is this great hole in my heart. There is this emptiness I feel. And I need this matter of religion to be resolved. Okay, this is my second purpose in going back to India. And so what I do over the course of the next year and a half is, is at the very end of it, after I get married, and it is the month of Ramadan, it is the month of Ramadan, uh, it is the first time that I am really fasting, okay, in my life. Uh, at the age of 30, uh, uh, apart from as a kid, okay, apart from as a kid and fasting, fine, but as an adult, Ramadan comes, I am in the home of my uncle, and the environment is different. They are all fasting, they are all praying five times a day during the month of Ramadan. So this was a very, very uh, a special time for me, a, a special, uh, uh, you know, a special time. Everybody, everybody in the house is praying. Everybody in the house is fasting. So I follow. So I am praying. I'm fasting, and also I'm reading the Quran. I'm listening to the Quran. I'm following along with the with the Arabic scripture and I'm listening with meaning. Okay? At this point, I cannot I cannot I can no longer remember how to read the Quran. Okay? I do not know how how they are pronounced. So I'm listening to an Arabic speaker, to a native speaker, who is reciting the Quran after every single verse, he then there is an English translation of what that verse actually meant, okay? Why am I doing this? 
I am actually doing this to give Islam and the Quran one final chance before I convert to Christianity completely, okay? This is why I'm doing it, and I'm reading it out of curiosity. I know so much over these past 15 years. I know so much about Christianity. I have no clue what my own religion says or my own scripture says. I have no idea what's in the Quran. So, how am I going to convert away from Islam when I have never given Islam a chance to begin with? All right. If I've never read the scripture, uh, if I've never read the Quran with meaning, uh, you know, how am I going to convert out of it? That's not fair. Okay. So this is this is my purpose is before I leave Islam entirely, I need to give it in fairness its due. Let me at least read the scripture, okay, uh, before I convert entirely. So this was my reason for reading the Quran. And as I'm, as, I'm, as I'm listening, as I'm following along, and as I'm reading the Quran, I am, I am pleasantly surprised. Uh, I come across God, I come across uh, Satan and the story of Adam and Eve, the things which we know from the Bible. Uh, I come across the story of Moses, peace be upon him. To my, to, my, uh, to my amazement, really, I come across the story of Jesus and the Virgin Mary and the disciples, and I'm thinking, this is amazing. It's like, it's like everything I know from the Bible is also here in the Qur'an, and I, I just did not expect that. Okay, I did not expect that I would learn about Jesus in Islam. I thought Jesus was exclusively, you know, uh, something which belonged to Christianity. So I was, I had heard the name Isa as a kid, but I had no idea, you know, what that meant or any, any real stories about Jesus from Islam. I was not aware. Okay. So I come to the Quran and I am amazed. I'm thinking, man, this is everything I know in the Bible pretty much is being confirmed here in the Quran. And as I, as I tell you, I have ever been on the quest for religion. And I go through the Qur'an, I come to the end of chapter 5 of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Ma'idah, the table spread. And I come across the last 12 verses of chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, the table spread, and I am in tears. I am in tears because the issue of the Trinity and the issue of who is Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, who is Allah, who is God, this issue was resolved for me convincingly, without any doubt, with these 12 verses, verse 109 through verse, to verse 120 in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5 in the Qur'an. And my quest for the correct religion had ended at that point. And I was in tears, I was praying to Allah, I was saying, Ya Allah, my life, uh, myself, I belong to you, you can do with me as you please. So Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, I'm very, very happy. I, seriously, I mean, these verses, the, the language, what Allah said, what Allah asked Jesus, how Allah questioned Jesus, not only that, but how Jesus, peace be upon him, will respond to this questioning from God on the day of resurrection. His response was so beautiful. I was truly, truly driven. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was in, I was in tears. I was, this, this was the end of the road for me. As you know what, if I've been looking for a religion, I have traveled around the world. I have looked at other religions and, and so on and so forth. And I come to Islam to look at what it is, and subhanAllah, exalted is Allah, it is all right here, I just needed to look. Okay? So, what I would like to do is, I would love to, inshaAllah, I have the intention of reciting these 12 verses for you um, in the very near future, inshaAllah. 
and I would like to share with you its meaning and my limited understanding of these verses and, and to describe to you why I think they are so amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate, I appreciate your, your time and uh, may Allah uh, grant his, his mercy and his blessings to all of us. I mean, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.